At Fully Charged, we always want to shoot episodes all around the world without racking up hours of flight time. Well, we now have a new North American correspondent, a wonderful man called Ricky Roy who lives in California, which is handy as that's where this episode was filmed. And we sent Ricky to take an incredible electric vehicle on a little adventure from Venice Beach to Malibu. Of all the electric vehicles that I've covered in the past couple of years, in my opinion, nothing has won over the hearts and minds quite like this. This is the Rivian R1T, and we're gonna drive it today. But I was thinking to myself, is the Rivian still special all these years later? Well, that's what we're gonna find out today. Farnborough. Amsterdam, San Diego, Sydney, the number one festival for clean energy and electric vehicles is coming to you. Whether it's Fully Charged Live in Europe, supported by Mobility Service, or Fully Charged Live UK, supported by LV, we cannot wait to see you there. Let's get the R1T out on the road. My dream has always been a car that I could convert into whatever I wanted. What I mean by that is imagine a sports car that was fast enough to race on a track and then you could turn a dial and drive it around town. So with the Rivian, I have the car at the max ride height, which is 13.1 inches, and I feel like I'm driving a monster truck, right? It is not dynamic it feels like there's a ton of body roll and sway and as i turn around these corners and stuff but i could just click one button and go to sport in the lowest setting and now the car is pneumatically dropping me down to about 9.5 inches so in terms of steering feel uh, in sport mode i do wish that it had a little bit of a heavier steering feel it still feels pretty soft it is firmed up a little bit from comfort mode, but it is nice when you're turning this much on the twisties and stuff, but I do wish there was a little bit of a heavier, less assisted feel. Let's just say I don't have very many vehicles at my house that I would feel comfortable doing this with. And this is not exactly an off course road but the Rivian just eats it up. It feels like it's barely even trying. This is a huge divot right here. Huge rocks and boulders and it's crawling. And uh, ooh, look at this. Because of the four motor drive, there's almost really no trouble you can get into that you can't get back out of. That's remarkable, wow. <laughs> I was never very big into off-roading, but after this, I might have to change my tune. This is incredible, really. Now I'm at the lowest ride height, and in the same truck, look at that now. The same truck, a second ago I was rock climbing, and now it feels not that different from like a sedan or maybe a small crossover or hot hatch. So how do you get in and out of the Rivian R1T? Well, first you've got this, which is your key. And of course, Rivian made it a carabiner. I would expect nothing less. This is one of the coolest keys I've ever seen. Uh, yeah. And unlocking it and locking it is just as simple as hitting the key fob. But now you're an adventurer, you're going swimming, you're going kayaking. Maybe you don't want to take all this stuff with you. They also have this. This is the Rivian wrist strap, which also opens and unlocks the car. So you could lock all your valuables in one of these numerous cargo areas and just use that. Go swimming and come back and get back in your car. Then there's also the phone app, just like on most modern cars with Bluetooth and you can just walk up to the car and get in. But if your phone died, you lose your keys, you still have this as well.
Now let's talk about the interior space for passengers and for cargo and stuff. First of all, let's start right here. I love this kind of fold out map storage bin here on the driver's side door. And there's even more storage here under my seat. There's a little bin for, not, it's not particularly big, but it has a little bit of room. And then generally here on the driver's side, this is a roomy and comfortable car. The headroom is fantastic being a truck. It's really tall and you could probably be almost seven feet tall and fit just fine in this truck. Power controls for all your seat adjustments and everything. And overall, I've been driving this for about an hour and it is a really comfortable truck. The reality is you could probably fit two six foot three, six foot four people very comfortably back here, which is good. Uh, the, 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 the seating position is nice and high. I feel like my feet have a place to go down. Some of the cars I've been in recently, it's kind of flatter, but this is pleasant. I think I could be back here for a long road trip without any issue at all. So now let's talk about the amenities and the comforts for the rear passengers. First of all, you have a little storage bin on the door, just like the front. And then you have another one right here for maps and smaller things. You have two USB-C chargers, which is fantastic. My favorite feature of this back is this right here, a USB-C port on the back of the seat and this hook. So for my kids on a long road trip, I could hang their iPads for them, plug it in, not have anything dangling around and keep them entertained and uh, stop them from asking, are we there yet? And you have heated seats in the back and you have heated and cooled seats in the front. I just love how the seats all look. Is that nice? Just has a, it's a very upscale, high-end feel. And this is all vegan leather. It is not actually made from cows. And it's, um, it's really comfortable. I've been in here for about an hour and uh, yeah, no complaints there. Let's talk a little bit about styling. Now that of course is gonna be subjective and it's gonna depend on how you feel about this truck and maybe you love it, maybe you don't. I'll say for me, I love almost everything about this truck. The sides and the back I think are perfect. I wouldn't change anything. The front I like, but I wouldn't say that I love. There's something about the front light and the, the ovals that kind of look a little a little out of place for me, but that's a really small gripe because overall the general proportions of this thing are just absolutely fantastic. It has a presence and everywhere I've gone during this couple of hours that I've had with this now, people are going to notice you. <laughs> this is one of those vehicles that just stands out. There's nothing else quite like it. So now let's talk about the Rivian R1T infotainment system. Here, clearly you can see there's two screens. There's one here in front. That's a 16 inch touch screen. And then there's also the gauge cluster screen behind the steering wheel. This is gonna be a breath of fresh air for people who are familiar with a gauge cluster who like to see things in front of them in the road. It is quite nice. So the next thing I'll say is if you're familiar with a Tesla, you're gonna be right at home here in the Rivian because they're really, really, really similar. For example, all your controls are in this screen. Now, if you look around, the only controls that I can see that are physical is the windshield wiper button here. So I can turn on my windshield wiper on this left stock. I actually like that. It's a little bit trickier on cars that don't have that. And then here's your headlight control. So I can turn on my fog lights or on my headlights and fog light. All that control is also mechanical here on this left stock. And then on the right stock is the gear shifting for reverse, neutral, drive and park. All pretty standard stuff. So now if we jump into the menu, here's your climate control settings. There are no knobs or dials. Everything is here on the screen. And if you wanted to turn on your climate controls. It looks like that. This car doesn't have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. So you're gonna be stuck with using it. Luckily for Rivian, the UI is fantastic. It is one of the most zippy and responsive UIs I've ever seen. Look at that. It's just, 
it just feels like there's not a dropped frame in the animation. All right, so to fully get a full sense of how amazing this truck is, we gotta jump outside. And it starts here with the frunk. Let's start here. Right here on the key fob, I can access it by double clicking this button, or I can reach over here. There is a trigger, push that, and it is powered open. And this is a massive front trunk. There's a flat floor, as you can see here, and some really clever engineering, because if you open this flap, magnets right here, and as you push it, it'll hold itself up and you have access to charge cables and things like this, which is their secure cable system. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Flip it down, and that's your frunk. And you can open it remotely. Can you close it remotely? Yes, you can. That is really convenient. I think most of the time, if I were to go grocery shopping, I would just use the front trunk, hit a button, open it, put my stuff in, and close it. That's the way I would use this truck. All right, so this is the tonneau cover. This is an optional accessory. I would opt for it, I think, personally. But here's what the truck looks like fully closed. It has quite a bit of kind of a secure feel to it. Now, to open the tailgate, push this button here, power down, manual back up but now that's what it looks like in terms of what the storage situation is to open the tunnel cover there's a button right here on the bed so here's a light on and there is a light off light on light off so i actually just found out that this truck has two air compressors one powers a pneumatic suspension system that allows you to lift yourself up and down the second is an accessory one for whatever you might be doing. Whether you need the air for the tires to inflate them and deflate them for off-roading and on-roading, or to run power tools if you use this truck for work, not bad. Of course, it might get louder when I'm actually using it, but the main use case for that is for the tires because when you're on-road, Rivian recommends about 48, 50 PSI on the tires. And when you're off-roading, they recommend you reduce the tire pressure to 28 PSI. That way you have more contact with the ground and better off-road capability. Moving along, there's something that most electric vehicles I've found don't have that does show itself here with the Rivian, and that is a spare tire. And this isn't just a spare tire, that is a full size spare. No matter which configuration of truck you get, we of course have the sport tire, but you get a full size spare. And if you do a lot of off-roading and adventure seeking, odds are, it'll come in handy. So this is an adventure machine after all. And with this, let's say you had a bicycle or something else that you need to strap down to go on a hike and come back. Well, you can do that securely with this. And of course, this would go through your wheel spoke or whatever you want to secure. Maybe you have luggage, you can go to the hand hold. And then from the other side, you'd lock it into place. You heard that little motor and now you can't pull them out, giving you a little bit of security for whatever belongings you might have. I have never seen that on any other car before. Pretty cool. So if I unlock it, it pulls right out. That's pretty cool. All right, what do we got over here? Two 110 wall outlets like you would have in your house. See if you wanted to run a mini fridge or charge your toys, you could do that from that port. Finally, one last thing I wanna bring up are these ties right here on the bed. Rivian has a roof and bed rack system. It actually has a expanding size that allows you to attach it here to hold things like the tent attachment if you wanna go camping, or you can shrink it down a bit and put it up here as a ski rack or any other accessory that you want. And of course, adding them and taking them off is really easy. You can just leave them at home if you don't need them, but that is a really flexible way to add extra storage and holds to the vehicle. So now let's get into the really fun part. This is kind of the most signature thing about the Rivian truck, I think, which is the gear tunnel. Button right up here opens it and you have an absolutely cavernous area before the bed and after the truck for storage. Can you see me? So here on the driver's side in the gear tunnel, we have a 12 volt DC outlet, like a cigarette lighter port that you can plug into to charge things while you're driving. And over here on the passenger side, 
you have a regular 110 AC wall outlet for everything else. Next up, let's talk about the efficiency of the vehicle. Of course, you know this is not a sedan, it's not a fastback, it's not built for aerodynamics, so you're going to consume more power than your average sedan. But that being said, on this 100 mile drive here from Venice Beach to Malibu and back, I'm averaging about 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour. So that means if this battery is 120 kilowatts, I would be getting to four, about 300 miles, exactly what they have stated with this vehicle. Now that's not bad. And I have not been driving slow for sure. So if you put it in the conserve mode where two of the motors get disabled and you drive more carefully, <laughs> maybe you could even get more. But I will say that on a road trip like this where there's quite a bit of hills, I mean, just look at how much this is not an easy road by any means, but even then I'm getting right about 300 miles of range and that's good to know. Now this is a pickup truck, it's an adventurer, but at the end of the day, it is still an electric vehicle. So efficiency and how many miles you get per kilowatt hour are really important. So let's take a look at this from the realm of aerodynamics. How aerodynamic is it? You might think not very, it's a pickup truck. There's, you know, it doesn't appear to be particularly felt through the air but it actually is surprisingly pretty good first of all you'll notice the front which feels like a big blunt truck front actually isn't because it tapers right around here on both sides as a result any air that hits the front is going to get pushed around the vehicle pretty well second you've got these these are little diffusers here in the front bumper to direct air in that hit the front and build up pressure in this area and feed it right through the back this is something you've probably seen in other vehicles but this cut right here which you might think is bad for aerodynamics is actually really good i think the prius is the first car i ever saw incorporate this but the idea is by keeping a nice tight line along here you have better shedding of vortices as the car is traveling at higher speeds finally then there's this this rear spoiler is actually quite a bit of an aerodynamic member as a result of this shape all the air that stays glued to the car is fed in and through as opposed to just over and above. The result of that is a little bit tighter airstream through the back of the vehicle and a little bit better aerodynamics. There's a camera looking back right there. And uh, again, a little bit of clever engineering to eke out every little mile out of this car. So I think the thing that kept me from loving this car more when I first saw it was yeah, it's cool, but it is a truck and I've never particularly cared for how they handle. But this, in the lowest ride mode, isn't that different. Now, this is still nearly a 7,000 pound machine. It's by no means svelte, but it hides its bulk pretty well. And those batteries being on the floor and the low center of gravity all result in a pretty good driving dynamic. So here's a look at the regenerative braking, right? I'm going downhill. I'm gonna be, so here is 40 miles an hour downhill. I'm off the accelerator pedal and I feel like I'm braking. Look at that, I'm coming to a complete stop. True one pedal driving, which is a must for any EV. If you're new to EVs and you don't think so, give it time. I, I assure you, if you just stick with it, you'll find the joy that is one pedal driving, a must have. So in terms of noise, vibration, and harshness, I'd say this car is pretty well sorted out. It's really quiet. The wind noise is quieter than most cars I've tested. I don't have a, a meter to tell you exactly how loud, but at highway speeds, it's really quiet. And the road noise is similarly really well isolated. I don't think I hear a lot of the road coming through the tires into the cabin. That's one of the benefits of big rubber tires as a big shock absorber to keep you that much more comfortable. So then, was the Rivian R1T worth the wait? I gotta tell you, I think it was. This is a uniquely special package. It brings together certain things like being able to go off-roading. It has the accessories for camping and adventure. 
it has the Adventure Network where they're going to be installing charging locations in national parks and other places where you might find yourself on adventure. And it goes 300 miles and it has a truck bed. This is clearly going to be not for everyone. It is expensive. It's probably beyond the budget of some. And if you use a truck for work, will this be for you? It does have that pneumatic air compressor in the back, so maybe. But if you like adventure, you've been thinking about RVing or seeing the planet, I can't think of a better vehicle than this. I have been smiling for the past hour since I got in. And at the end of the day, as much as you want to break down numbers and 800 horsepower and everything else, there's really nothing else that quite compares to that feeling that you have. And if you're going to spend money on a new car, why not love to drive? Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Please leave a comment down below in the comment section. Give us a like. That's always nice. We love getting a like. And also, if you're really interested in this topic, that video is one we did a while ago, very relevant to the topic. This is our latest episode up there. You can subscribe to Fully Charged and up there, you can have a look at our Patreon page.